First, let's talk about the educational value of Aino Koji. In this latest volume, various students have shown growth, but I'd like to focus particularly on the leaders of their respective classes. As class leaders, all of them have a significant influence on their students, and Aino Koji's interference with them and the impact this has on the class is also significant. Class leaders hold high educational value for Aino Koji, and he likely adjusts his actions while monitoring their growth. And examining the situation of each leader is crucial when considering Aino Koji's future actions. Firstly, Sakaragi has shown potential for personal growth, and there's a sense that she will develop into a character who is not only manipulative but also supports others. Although, Sakaragi has some physical limitations, although in terms of intelligence, she's already top class. So, Ainokoji's interest and concern towards her might not be particularly high. Ainokoji hasn't had much contact with Sakaragi until now. However, due to the irregular situation of Komodo's explosion in this volume, Ainokoji has been providing some care for her. Still, Sakaragi is a fully developed character, so her education educational value is somewhat low for Aino Koji. Let's talk about Yuen, who became the winner in this volume. Since being defeated by Aino Koji, there haven't been significant visible changes since year 2. He remains true to his Yuen like character. There were scenes indicating concerns from Hiyori about whether Yuen's leadership in the class is appropriate, but Yuen's leadership is almost complete, even though it might be considered unorthodox. So, Aino Koji's educational value for him seems to be relatively low. Regarding Horikita, Aino Koji's analysis of her is nearly complete as of this volume, and there is a visible limit to her abilities. However, it was also mentioned that unexpected changes could occur in this school environment. From Aino Koji's perspective, there might still be room for her to evolve, making her a valuable presence for him. Finally, considering Ichinose, she has undergone the most significant transformation and is a character that has changed the most in the past few volumes. She exhibited an extraordinary transformation by controlling Watanabe in front of Aino Koji, even relentlessly attacking Karuizawa during the exam. She has undergone tremendous change as a result of her possessive desire for Aino Koji. Originally, it was an attempt to boost the class's level, creating revolutionaries like Kanzaki, but it seems to have reached a point where it might not be necessary anymore. Honestly, Aino Koji's educational just right now is definitely focused on Ichinose, so I think the chances of them interacting will likely increase even more in the future. There's a high possibility that Ichinose will be involved in a romantic experiment related to Karizawa, so it's safe to say that a dreadful situation will unfold towards the end of the third term. Next is the impact of the special exam results. In this exam, there were various unexpected developments, so let's take a look at the effects they bring. This time, the exam was a game where only the first place class would gain class points, while all the other classes would lose points. For reference, at the point of volume 9, the class points were as follows. Sakayanegi's class was in first place with 1,200 points, and the lowest was Luen's class with 634 points, showing a significant difference. However, this has changed due to the results of this special exam. First, a significant change is that Luen's class has become class C, and Ichinose's class has dropped to class D. Furthermore, the point difference between Sakayanegi's class and Horikita's class has narrowed down to just a little over 100 points, getting close to a level where they could potentially overtake the situation in a single special exam. Also, during a conversation with Sakanagi this time, Aino Koji mentioned that he wanted to bring the class points into a state of equilibrium and maximize the class strength as much as possible. In fact, the results of this exam have significantly reduced the gap in the class points, and it seems like there have been a considerable reduction in power difference within the classes. With unexpected changes in Sakanagi, a dramatic change in Ichinose, and steady growth in Horikita among other factors, especially in the case of Ichinose's class, they initially seemed very week, but due to the awakening of Ichinose, their overall impression improved significantly. The classes now seem to be in a balanced state of power. However, an issue arises concerning Aino Koji's role and position in all of this. In this volume, Hashimoto proposed headhunting Aino Koji, and it's clear that Aino Koji's value and influence are increasing. Horikita also relies on Aino Koji, both as a counsellor and as someone to depend on times in need. The only issue is that Aino Koji himself doesn't have any intention of becoming directly involved in the matters. While his been more active compared to his first days, he still maintains the position of a counsellor, guiding students with issues. In reality, if Aino Koji were to directly solve problems, it would take him away from his primary goal of education. He prefers not to get directly involved as much as possible. In an exceptional scenario, Aino Koji became fully involved in the unanimous special exam, but that was, in a way, for the sake of supporting Horikita and his irrational emotions towards Damanabu. The instances where Aino Koji directly solves problems are mainly related to the right room, which are complete irregularities. However, when considering this, I don't think the current situation is ideal for Horikita's class in terms of Aino Koji. As I mentioned earlier, Horikita is also relying on Aino Koji, and Aino Koji is getting more and more recognized as a 
talented person. In fact, there were moments in this exam where Ainakorja's name was mentioned as a potential leader when selecting a leader. From Ainakorja's perspective, being in Horikita's class increases the risk of becoming directly involved as well. Horikita's class is rapidly gaining momentum in terms of class points and is very close to moving up to class A. The growth of problematic students like Sudo and Ike is also clearly depicted, and the class's strength has significantly increased. On the flip side, this situation allows Aina Koji to refrain from actively interfering, as a class naturally follows a positive course. Furthermore, once Horikita fully grows as a leader, and the situation with Karizawa is settled, there may not be much reason for Aina Koji to remain in Horikita's class. Now, let us discuss Aina Koji's final goals and clarify some points in this context. In the latest volume, Aina Koji mentioned that he believes he has only one ultimate choice regarding his future and career path. It seems that returning to the White Room is relatively fixed in Aina Koji's mind. Therefore, it's highly likely that he's using this period before returning to the White Room to test his own educational theories. However, the question arises as to which class Aina Koji would choose to conduct his educational experiment. The class he belongs to will have the most significant influence on this experiment. In the latest volume, Aina Koji hinted at the possibility of changing classes again, which is a crucial point. Given the current circumstances, it seems unlikely that Aina Koji moved to Sakanagi or Ryuen's class, as he highly values his ongoing battles between them and his motivation can significantly decline if he moved to one of their classes, as he wouldn't be able to extract the full potential of the other classes. So, the likelihood of Aina Koji moving to Sakanagi or Ryuen's class is quite low. Next, regarding Horikita's class, it's evident that they have made significant progress. Horikita, as a class leader, has had her ability thoroughly assessed and Aina Koji's influence has played a role in this growth. The class has been rapidly climbing in the class rankings and as I mentioned earlier, it seems that their educational value has decreased significantly. Even students like Ike showed clear signs of improvement in the exam. Therefore, if Horikita's class continues to achieve high results in the end of the exams, I honestly think there's little reason for Aina Koji to stay. On the other hand, when it comes to Ichinose's class, there are various factors at play, including Ichinose's mysterious change and the revolutionary events instigated by Aina Koji, such as the case of Kanzaki. So, there's a lot of more room for manipulation and innovation in that class. Moving to Ichinose's class offers the advantage of Aina Koji being able to work behind the scenes using Ichinose. When in Horikita's class, there are many cases where he might be sidelined, but effectively using Ichinose allows him to maintain an educational position, which is a significant advantage. Another reason for moving to Ichinose's class is that the current class points of Ichinose's class are the lowest. Despite Ichinose's growth, if the goal is to use class points to balance the power dynamics, then Ichinose's class is the most convenient option. Considering possible scenarios for moving to classes other than Ichinose's, the most likely would be if Sakanagi and Ryuen were to be expelled. Both are leader dependent one man classes, and if the leaders were to leave, it would be quite inconvenient for Aina Koji's objectives. So, for Aina Koji to move to either Ryuen's or Sakanagi's class, it's unlikely unless one of them expels from the school. Aina Koji is probably adjusting on a case by case basis, considering the possibility of staying in Horikita's class while monitoring the overall changes in abilities. It's most likely that the decision on which class Aina Koji moves to will be confirmed by the end of third term. We've discussed this extensively before, but the most significant change in the latest volume is the emergence of signs of Sakanagi's growth. With the double blow of Hashimoto's betrayal and Kamado's explosion, it finally cracked open her thick shell. Sakanagi, who has been an absolute powerhouse so far, is now in a situation that has allowed her to begin growing, which is quite exciting. From this development, we can expect an intense showdown between Sakanagi and Ryuen in the upcoming end of term exams. In the latest volume, Ryuen secured first place and Sakanagi took fourth place, narrowing the class points gap to less than 400 points. Depending on the result of the end of the exams, it could become quite challenging. There are real possibilities that Sakanagi's class might fall from class A. Before seeing the results of this volume, I had thought Ryuen was likely to win, but with Ryuen's victory in this recent special exam, it now feels like the balance might be in Sakanagi's favor. After showing such significant growth, if you were to lose against Ryuen in a one-on-one -on -one match, it could be quite problematic. So honestly, it's become completely uncertain which side will win. Another point of concern is the deal that Ryuen and Sakanagi made during the Uninhibited Island exam. According to Sakanagi, there's a possibility of her having Ryuen's head, and considering how this has been drawn out, it's very likely that the details will be revealed during the end of the exams. My expectation is that it might involve a battle with explosions on the line, but what do you all think? Sakanagi has protect points, but even ignoring that and having a battle with explosions at stake could be quite interesting. In any case, the outcome of the battle between Sakanagi and Ryuen will 
will likely determine how Aina Koji acts, especially if Sakanagi's class drops in the class rankings and Hirokita's class rises to class A. In such a scenario, the chances of Aina Koji moving to another class will significantly increase. With all that said, I'd like to wrap up this video by speculating on the future developments of the story, taking into account everything we've discussed so far. Let's consider what the content of the next volume will be. Since there was no afterword from the author in this volume, there are some unknowns, but I don't think we'll immediately jump into the end of the exams. I believe there'll be some episodes or events leading up to the end of the exams. In this context, it's essential to delve into the story surrounding Nagumo. Given the intense focus of Aya Koji's battles and the many events that have occurred, it's unlikely that Nagumo's story will be left unaddressed. Besides, he'll be graduating soon if they don't hurry. It seems fitting to resolve various matters before the end of the exams. Furthermore, Aina Koji once initiated a battle with Nagumo wagering 20 million points and it's about time for Aina Koji to prepare class transfer tickets or points. Also, if they decide to outsource these resources, Nagumo seems to be the most straightforward option. In fact, Nagumo's presence and involvement make it nearly the only choice. So I think we should address the events surrounding Nagumo first then proceed to the end of the exams. Lastly, let's briefly discuss predictions for the most important part, the end of the exams. Let's go over the current class points again. Horikita's class is just one step away from reaching class A. In terms of matchups, Sakanagi's class will face Duren's class and Horikita's class will face Ichino's class. Regarding Horikita's class, they're in a situation where they can secure their move to class A through a direct confrontation. Also, I mentioned earlier that it's uncertain what will happen in the Sakanagi versus Duren match, but I believe Duren might win. As for Sakanagi, losing one more time might provide room for further growth. If Sakanagi's class doesn't lose, I don't think Horikita's class will be able to move to class A. So I think Sakanagi might lose when considering it in reverse. As for the match between Horikita's class and Ichinose's class, I anticipate that Horikita's class will win, assuming they move to class A. It's a speculative projection based on the assumption, but for instance, the point system in this match is the same as the special exam, with a winner gaining 100 points and a loser losing 50 points. The point difference will look like this. Horikita's class will neatly surpass Sakanagi's class and conclude their second year arc in class A. In contrast, would fall to the last place. This would be a perfect moment for Aina Koji to make his class transfer. Going from class A to the bottom class is quite a crazy and intriguing move, which would certainly leave a significant impact. In fact, I believe that this is the only plausible scenario if Aina Koji moved to Ichinose's class. If, by chance, Ichinose's class defeats Horikita's class, the latter will remain in class B, and there will still be room for improvement in terms of abilities, making it more likely for Aina Koji to stay there. Either way, I think Aina Koji's strategy will be determined in the end of the exam, so I'm looking forward to what will unfold. But this was my review and analysis on Classroom of the Lee YouTube Volume 10. If you liked it, please subscribe, leave a like, and I hope to see you soon.